Later, guys. But I'll catch you guys in chat. Later, Raider. Thank you. Um, that sounds like how I, I would actually be a very good method for me to digest and learn about a lot of these horticulture uh, and biology books. While I find they are, don't oh, see Fluff. Uh, maybe I don't know if he jumped out or whatever happened there. I'll just let Fluff in. Sorry. Um, that they're a lot of big uh, dry words, and while it's interesting stuff. Um, it can be very dry and it's hard, hold, hard to hold my attention to sit there and read that book like that. Whereas if I'm sitting there playing in the garden and you have somebody just reading it off and narrating and, you know, you're probably not even paying all that uh, in-depth of attention to a lot of it. You're just kind of, but you're absorbing it still, you know, so I think that, so that'd be really, really cool. That's the best way to do it. And the, a really good practice is to just if you're not into it anymore back away back away and get something get into something else that's getting your attention at the moment and leave that for when you are interested because that's when you learn your best not when you're forcing it and you're no 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 because it's not going to happen it's like list trying to listen to a lecture and you don't want to be there yeah you yeah nothing's going to stay or very little in, so this, in my experience. So this app you're talking about, is this the one where you like scan the book and then it'll like, you can scan so much of it and then it just reads it off to you. Right. Yeah. It basically does that. Okay. Cause yeah. no, I've, I've actually been looking for something like that. Cause I was just complaining to my wife the other day. Um, I got really bad fucking hands right now. Uh, like it's, mm -hmm. it's, I can't even hold the book to read it when I do love reading, but you know, like it just, I can't hold them to read them right now. So Dude, it, it I've, bugs I've been my wanting. neck, my eyes, just holding it, having to sit there forever. I got shit to do, man. And, and it's really cool when I, if I got to drive to an hour to class uh, and then an hour back, Boom, That's I just put that on. I don't even need internet access. So if I'm stuck in a place and there's no internet, I have like a hundred hours worth of entertainment easily on, on a bunch of books from like past books that I've read and books that I want to read about mycology, horticulture, micropropagation, which is tissue culture. We'll get into it in a little bit. And yeah, that's that's the best thing you can do. But uh, I don't want to take up anyone else's time if uh, you want to get through with the intro. Yeah, we uh, just kind of hit the live button there. Normally, we'd hit our song and uh, do our ditty and all that. But we were just having it, it such a good conversation that it was just like, hey, let's get this going. Uh, here we are, Tuesday Night Talk, Caribou Heart TV episode, uh, I believe it's 247. And this is what I think is probably going to be our smartest episode ever, guys. Everyone's just like, what? Smart on Caribou Heart TV? Absolutely. Tonight, we've got Raptor Grows joining us, and he's going to put on a bit of a seminar of sorts about tissue culture. Something a lot of us have heard about. Most of us don't really know a lot about. But uh, it sounds, well, as he said last time he was on earlier this year, uh, if you've got a kitchen, you've got a lab, and the thought of being able to put cuttings in... um. In, in a refrigerator to put on ice, so to speak. Uh, it's a little more difficult than that, I would imagine. But, uh, you know, if I uh, have that option is huge. So, um, Raptor, thank you very much once again for joining us. Thank you again for taking the time to put together what you put together, uh, what we're about to see. Uh, this is very cool. Uh, really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, we really do appreciate this, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again for having me, you guys. Uh, I was mentioning before that I wanted to do this on my own kind of platform before, but I just was in the middle of so much stuff in middle of school and everything. Right now I'm on a summer break and I'm actually taking summer classes. So you guys caught me right in between all that stuff. Uh, there's barely any rest in the, in the Raptor lab. I have to force it. And I was just mentioning before that I had, I shut down everything, man. Uh, I focused on school. I shut down the garden. I shut down my lab where I had my tissue culture, both fungal and plant tissue culture. I just, you know what? I can get rid of it. It's not the end of the world. I can just start up later when I'm not like swamped with just material. And it was either school, family, uh, fun experiments and garden. So all those two of them had to go. 
So it was the experiments in the garden that had to go. Luckily, I had uh, stuff saved up. I had more than enough yield to, to last me a little bit. Uh, I might have to hit up a friend, though, cutting it a bit close. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for having me, you guys. Uh, we'll we'll get into it. And I can, cool, I can share. Great, great. So okay. do we want to hit a dab frog before we get started? Yeah, yeah, on please this one? do. All right, everybody, let's do one up here because it's time to put our thinking caps on. And while well, I do my best thinking when I'm high as fuck, I don't do my best talking when I'm high as fuck. Yeah, we'll see how I do. This will be fun to watch me. <laughs> What's everybody dabbing on? I'm about to be dabbing on a fresh gram of Jamaican haze butter. Well, let's open up here. Ooh. Yeah, I don't have uh, any, I have some dabs, but uh, I need to clean my rig and the dabs, uh, they're from a year ago, but they're from a special friend that is no longer with us. So I saved that mm. special occasions. Uh, right. I'm actually vaping on some Blue City Diesel by Blueberry Skunk, uh, crossed with Strawberry Starburst. And it's a little cross that I did that I was just experimenting with. And it's really good. And yeah, I'm just dry, dry vaping. What are you vaping with? Uh, this is the, this is a wood vape. And I just. Is that a log sense? This one is uh, underdog. Wood sense? Yeah, huh. yeah. Uh, I believe it's cherry, cherry wood. And then I just use my two footer along with it. I have an attachment that has, it goes to it. Very nice. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those, but you almost use like, a, you know, almost like a Dynavap tip and then you stick the little fucking, you know, wood over the top of her. And, mm -hmm. yep. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, let's, let's see. I've got a, I'm, I'm, I'm vaping as well. I've got a little fucking Vortex fucking stem on my Dynavap and uh, we're going with some um, uh, Rosman 82's uh, Grapple Fritter with a little bit of Kerple Fantasy mixed in. And I am dabbing on some, uh, it's called Jillian from Alchemy. Uh, it's pretty good. Nothing special, but. How about you? I'm Ms. not dabbing at all. I'm smoking actually some awesome flower that uh, Chris Canna flower uh, gave me when he came for a visit. It's strawberry banana, and the taste is like amazing. I really love it. It will forgive you, but only because the flower is amazing. If it was bunk, <laughs> you'd be like, get out. But, uh, <laughs> right. well, as long as it's stellar shit, you know, because let's face it. Stellar shit done got me fucked up just as much as dab tab on uh, plenty of occasion in the past. Just... Totally. Yeah, no, he grew it really nice. It's it's really nice for sure. Awesome. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. Um, shit, I'm running out of stuff to say and I haven't even dabbed yet. This stuff, uh, nice and white looking though. It's uh, We've gotten it once before, so I'm excited to play with it again. A big uh, fan of the native dispensaries once again. So shout out to them. I'm just trying to keep up with all the fucking tagging. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I just say cheers to everyone. Like, uh, I especially, do yeah, too. yeah. Yeah. It's I but you I do what? try to get individual That's tags. It. I'm, just yeah. phone it in, guys. It's fine. Yeah. You know, no I... big deal. Phone it in. No, just, just <laughs> it's fine. Generalize. I know. I have this problem. Like, I feel guilty if I even miss somebody. Like, I literally scroll up to make sure, like, I don't miss anybody. Sometimes I do, though, anyway. I apologize if I do. <laughs> It's just a personal thing. I just have to. <laughs> What's Uncle Rick smoking? Or grinding up there? <laughs> Hi, everybody. 
Uh, what I have here is, well, quite frankly, uh, I'd like to suggest that it's a mystery, basically because uh, got too high and got everything mixed up. But uh, I don't know. It looks looks beautiful. Uh, it, it, it's definitely indica, and uh, yeah, really enjoying it. And uh, great to see you, Raptor. Really looking forward to the show tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to see you too, man. Sorry, Rick. I tried getting the spotlight thing going on a big screen in your butt, but I was too busy coughing and I wasn't fast enough. <laughs> Got to be quick. <laughs> I think... Um... So we've kind of got the niceties and whatnot out of the way. You about ready to give her a go here, Raptor? Yeah, yeah. I was just pulling up the first picture, and mm -hmm. I, I wish I put it into my actual presentation, but hey, it, it's something that I realized. Like, oh, that I saw it, and it was it was perfect. Well, good. Yeah, I guess whenever you're ready, man. And uh, once again, thank you. I'm excited, and yeah, this is gonna be fun. Cool. There we go. Can can everybody see that? Yep. Yeah. Great. Great. So what we have here to the left is just a straight up bare bones lab and a very small space. And you have everything you need here. You even got a little blender. Or this one actually might be a uh, stir plate, but it is. You can see blenders, and you they will be used in plant propagation. Uh, yeah, everything here is, see, hormones, measuring beakers. Uh, you actually have uh, some media that's being prepared. And overall, I would, uh, I'm, I'm even jealous of this small site. This is basically what I learned, uh, the same kind of setup that I learned on in school. Uh, I didn't learn... First off, it's uh, micro propagation is what we're all talking about now. Uh, and micro propagation is just plant tissue culture. Tissue culture is uh, the culturing, the aseptic culturing of animal and plant and fungal tissue. And you can take, basically the whole idea of it is you can take one cell and give it the right conditions and sterility, it will go about mitosis or meiosis, depending on the cell, and it'll replicate. It'll do this again and again and again until you got a large mass of tissue. And that's basically what we're aiming at here. That theory was brought up in the late 1800s. Uh, and it's, it, it was such a game changer. We had to really consider a lot of things. So many things were being put into place. It's like the birth of microbiology. And that didn't occur until after Darwin's uh, just theory of life. And thank goodness we got there. We've had this kind of technology around, the theory at very least, since the late 1800s. So a hundred years, well over a hundred years. And it's, it was first a bit of a struggle to get here because we didn't understand that we needed to disinfect things in order to have a lot of this be more successful but we started off with just uh, like coconut water. Coconut water was discovered to have a big influence in tissue culture at the very beginning and micropropagation, just because it's very similar to a seed. It's not exactly a seed. Uh, and it has everything in it that a plant needs. It's just a basic, basically uh, an embryo, uh, the perfect baby formula for an embryo. And that's, that's one of the very beginnings where we started. And one of the things that I wanna be studying is how to incorporate more organic 
uh, solutions into micropropagation because micropropagation is, we're, we're just using salts. We're just using nutrient salts to get, uh, to get the results that we want. But this was all done organically before because we didn't have those salts discovered yet, at least the majority of them and the hormones as well, we'll get into a little bit. But yeah, what you see on the left is a modern tissue culture lab. And what we have to the right is actually a repurposed converted kitchen into a preparation area. So I mentioned before the last time I was on here that if you have a kitchen, you can have a tissue culture lab. This is an example of it here. You have all the media, all the minerals, the, the fertilizers, the hormones, uh, you got dry agar powders. Uh, you, you don't need just agar, but I'll be referring to it a lot. And yeah, that's, that's basically where we're at. If you see here, you want a lot of storage space for all these things right here. You don't need to have all this out at the same, you know, all at the sit, like all day, every day. You need to put them away because eventually sunlight and possibly air exposure can get to it. But there's no reason that there should be going uh, any air degradation to these materials because of the vessels that they're in. And it should all just be airtight. Anyway, uh, let me actually get to the next pictures. How important is keeping everything sterile? It's absolutely important. You can't really get away from it. Uh, if you don't keep everything sterile, you're going to see some issues. And I would love, like I mentioned before, I'm looking into more organic solutions to use into tissue culture because I don't like using the conventional agricultural methods. Uh, I will, I've made an exception for this. This is it. It's plant, the micropropagation is probably the only time I'll be using these kinds of salts and these nutrients and hormones. And I, I really don't want to use these hormones, but uh, it's how we go about it. Uh, I, you don't have to be using these hormones all the time, but it is crucial that we keep everything sterile. Uh, it's when I say under aseptic conditions, that's what I mean. Just everything needs to be super clean as possible. I think. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a little uh, excerpt from Plants from Test Tubes is one of the books that I used to gather a lot of the information here. But yeah, here we have the it was I think believe in like the 1870s, 1890s when we first started thinking about it. But yeah, 1900s the theory basic of totipotency is described successful root and shoot tip culture. So it took 20 years to get from a theory to get to something actual like valid. And then, yeah, so right from there, we're a hundred years. Think about where we are now. It took a hundred years just to get to that point. Uh, yeah, once we get into the 1940s, you can see water, coconut water is first use. So that took 40 years to get to that point. There's so much learning that had to get done first. A lot of strides in microbiology. Uh, we're at 1960. I'm just kind of glossing through anyone, you know, go ahead and read through it. Uh, we have meristem culture is used for the first time in orchids. I'll get into that in a little bit, but it basically allowed us to get viable plants from pathogen ridden virus ridden plants that is very important we'll get into it in a little bit but i'm giving you guys some 
you know, understanding of how much time has gone through that we have to do. Uh, we have in the 1980s, that's the first time DNA has been sequenced. That was big. That has a lot to do into breeding. You know, we, we need to understand what's in the plant before we work with it. Or that's my hopes and that's how it should be if we're charging people good money for this plant. That's, that's, the, that's the standard that I think there should be because we're so far into technology that we could start doing a lot of these things that were done in really high tech labs in the 1900s, we could start doing them in our kitchen. If we invest in certain things, we'll get there. You know, it's gonna cost money. I, I can't I can't deny it, but that's just how it is. And then in the future, it's gonna be half to a quarter or to half quarter the price that it is now. Uh, so just moving on, we're in the 2000s. The first complete plant genome. Yeah, that's it's a pretty big fucking deal. Uh, I, I just wanted to share all that because it's important to know where we were and where we're coming from and where we're going. That's I'm a big history fan and it's it's crucial. If you don't understand like all the stuff that happened before, you can't fully take advantage of the modern knowledge. It really makes you appreciate everything. Looking at yeah, that no. age you threw up, it was, I know it's 20 year gaps on there. What do you, what, is, are you uh, willing to hazard a guess at where tissue, uh, tissue culture might be in 20 years from now? Oh, in like 2040, man, we're, I'm gonna at very le least say with a, a like as positively as possible, that I think it's gonna be much more widespread. Like more, I wanna teach my little nephews about this. This can be taught to little kids. It's that simple. So if we start doing that and getting them into like understanding how to do this so early, it's just gonna be the norm. It's just like, oh, how do I make cuttings? Well. My grandma knows how to take cutting. She taught me how. She just cut below the node, stuck it in the ground, and it fucking grew roots. It's uh, she's crazy. She's off. I've got an eight-year-old daughter that you can bet your uh, bottom dollar I'll be trying to try trying and either succeeding or failing with her as we do try this stuff because I. I believe that when uh, just the way you see the world is heading, I think that the people that know a thing or two about maybe being able to look out for themselves and do things like grow food, there you might very well find yourself very better off than a lot of people. And but al also just the joy of gardening, there's how much interest and excitement I have for it. Um, she sees that and she wants to get in there. She's like she doesn't give a fuck about cannabis, right? But while I'm doing that, you could be doing, say, tomatoes, because that's the first thing that comes to my mind, right, for her, so that she has plants that she can play with, or peppers, or something like that, so. Um, yeah. The thing I that I find uh, kind of scary is, you know, we've been thinking for a long time, we've got to do things ourselves, but we're already there, like, pretty soon soil is going to be contaminated like lots of things are going to be contaminated if we don't start doing things ourselves and that's like our children and their children so it is really important for sure well all uh, aspects I, I didn't really put this into the presentation but a lot of the stuff that we get from the grocery store is made in tissue culture labs it's already prepped we don't realize it but it's done on such a huge scale that it's pennies for them to do it. You know, once it's gone through and I'll, I'll be talking a little bit of how we got to that point with more and more advances and each one of these steps. But the potatoes that you're getting, unless you're getting from a farmer's market, uh, I really doubt that at least a couple of them weren't 
going through micropropagation. And yeah, it's, it's just so cool. Uh, I actually was watching a video with my friend Remo a couple of months back and it was just looking at potatoes going through micropropagation. It's like, what the fuck is the point? I was like, dude, you can distribute so much more food this way. I didn't like to say it, but it, it's true. You can distribute a lot more food. Uh, I would much prefer get it into organic cultivation from the get go. But if we got hungry people out there, they need to be fed. Uh, I have some personal beliefs uh, on the other things we could be dealing with, with like just not throwing out food that's not good. And if we do, if we're getting rid of it, it should be going to the needy. Uh, I think we have more personally, I think we have more than enough food being cultivated all around the world to feed everyone. It's just not being distributed correctly and it should all be done locally instead of it traveling thousands of miles away and then whatever percentage amount rots away. So I have some gripes with biotechnology. This, what we're talking about falls under biotechnology. There's a lot of claims, oh, we're saving the world. Listen, we can, we, by fixing some other stuff first and addressing that first, we could be fixing a lot more stuff, but that's, that's enough of the, uh, you know, me standing on the chair. Uh, let's get to the uh, presentation at hand. And again, if anyone wants to stop me and do a little dab frog break, feel like if we feel like the mood is right, go ahead and well, uh, I'll need to switch it. it. We'll do one real quick. Yeah. I almost felt like you were asking, so. Right, right, get started. Hope everyone's enjoying your evening. Dude, this is great. I'm um, really, I'm truly enjoying this. This is, I'm going to like gain like at least two IQ points by the time we're done here. My mom's going to be so proud of me. Nice. It's, the girlfriend might even give me a gold star sticker if I'm really good. Really wow her with my An new extra customer. snack pack. Yeah. Well, yeah, she would. <laughs> What's going to happen is I'm going to go downstairs once we're done here. And I'm going to start telling her about all this really cool stuff that we're going to try. And she's going to be like, that means more stuff coming in the house, right? Yeah. yeah. The, before I start, the really <laughs> cool thing about this is it falls right into uh, mycology as well. Lab, lab work, mycology. So the stuff that you guys have been getting for mycology it can be also be used in micropropagation. So hey, it's that's part of the reason I got into it too. Hey, goddess, Uncle Rick just found his excuse to delay the uh, doing of the mushrooms for an extra six, seven months at least. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> He's got to get on it. He's going to love it. Hey, oh, do a shoebox. At least do a shoebox, man. I do oh. jar very easily. Uh, I'll, it's I it's it just all. that first step. Just that first step, man. It's just sticking the toe in the water and uh, diving in. That's all I got to do. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, um, uh, just a quick question. Um, would you like us to save our questions for the end? I, that's probably the best way to do it, eh? Yeah. Hey, would, Rick, shut the fuck up and let him get on with his, per with his presentation. Yeah, if some questions are going on in chat, <laughs> please, please write them down for me because I'm not paying attention to chat from now on until we're done. And I'll be looking, hopefully, at some questions. So if some people in chat have some questions. Uh, there, there was one right away. There was one right away. And it was just What's, was like, is there a, uh, where is this information? And how can they get this information so they can go over it after, you know, some oh, of the sure. information you're referencing? I took a lot of the information from plants from test tubes and a actual chapter in one of my textbooks for plant propagation. And it was the micropropagation section of that chapter. And it came at the, at the very end. And of course, that the first thing I read was the last chapter in that class. Uh, it's funny how my mind works. But yeah, it's a, uh, let me see, I can get that up right now. 
it's there. It's in my notes, apologies. Yeah, so my book recommendations and what I've been uh, citing from a lot of this <laughs> is Hartman and Kester's Plant Propagation. Uh, plants from Test Tubes is the next one. And the third, which is the most in-depth one out of them all for tissue culture is plant propagation by tissue culture. And it's the third edition. It's volume one, but they only have volume one. I looked for the second volume and they canceled it. So don't, don't worry about it. There's just two. And one of the PDFs that really got me interested and I thought was super cool. If you just type in into whatever search browser you got, whatever search engine, tissue culture in the kitchen, and then type in PDF at the end, you'll get a lot of the information that I'm talking about. But if anyone has some questions after the fact, like they, they uh, want a better explanation, Go ahead and contact me at RaptorGrow on Instagram, and I might throw my email at the end. Uh, I'll consider it, but typically, if you talk to me on there, I'll respond within the day. So yeah, those are the four, yeah, sorry, three books and one PDF document that I highly recommend. And let me... That finger was aimed at all at Aldi, by the way. <laughs> I can't keep up with them. I just can't. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I, I don't love you over there in chat. Yeah. Aldi. I threw it in the uh, the chat if anyone's interested. And then I'll also repeat it at the end. And Aldi, if you need any help with any of that, you know how to get a hold of me, man. Uh, we've been been homies for over a year so uh i'll i have no problem sending you this very same presentation if you need man but we don't need it because we're going to be doing it right now and this is going to be recorded so you can always go back man to everyone else too uh yeah. let me know if you need any more information is, does anyone have any other questions before i start no, do your presentation. I'll save all my questions for the end, my friend. Cool, cool. You may just answer them along the way. So there. I'll, that uh, was the idea. I'll put your Instagram link up and stuff in the description here too. Uh, so people can click on that and track you out. Thanks, too. man. I appreciate it. it. Just me or does Rick look like he's hurting right now, not being able to ask a question? It's just like... <laughs> You got a like notepad. No. It's still being asked. Yeah, so like I said before, micropropagation, plant tissue culture. Uh, you, it's really, if anyone says tissue culture, they're basically referring to plant tissue culture. But I did a lot of my uh, like certification in bacterial cell culture. And then that's what got me into uh, fungal tissue culture and plant tissue culture, just by learning the basics and that I could get into this, into the, ag uh, the agricultural industry. So first things first, supplies, okay? Uh, first aid kit. You should, be, you should have a first aid, aid kit and fire extinguisher in your car and every single fucking room, if you can like really do it, but there should be more than a couple at your disposal. So please, please have these things right next to you. You're dealing with stuff that's gonna explode. All right, don't be a shithead. Be smart and protect yourself, all right? The best protection is knowledge. So whatever you're dealing with, there's gonna be a standard operating procedure for it, all right? It's SOP for short. You can look it up in the back. I think it's in the uh, MDS sheets. I'm, I, I'm probably fucking that up, but yeah. Look up the SOPs for whatever you're doing. It's absolutely crucial to stay safe. I don't want anyone's skin to be 
gone for the rest of their lives. Okay. You can get third degree burns very easily. And some of them can be chemical as well, depending on what you're dealing with and how far and deep you want to get into this rabbit hole of plant tissue culture. So please be safe. It's a big deal. When I, in one of my chemistry classes, my teacher was talking about safety. And this actually gets into clean change of well-fitting cotton-based clothes. Okay. Do not wear what I'm wearing right now. This is a, poly, a, a polyester base, a poly uh, fabric. If this gets into contact with fire, it will cling to my skin. It will solidify and they will have to rip my skin off to get to it. Okay. Be aware of what you're wearing. It's whether you're doing plant tissue culture, chemistry, if you're in any of those, uh, even cooking. Okay. Don't wear this stuff around the fire. If, if, uh, yeah. I can only say so much more about it. Please just be fucking safe. Uh, so for the clean change of clothes, you're, that's important for the reasons that you're not carrying any pathogens. There's not going to be any spores. There's not going to be any pollen. There's not going to be any bacteria that got onto those spores or whatever particle of dust that got onto your skin or your person, right? You need to shower and wash your freaking hands. If you can cut your nails down uh, as uh, close as you can without it hurting, obviously, be comfortable with it. And when you wash your hands, clean under your fingernails. There's a lot of shit under there. And that's going to fuck up all this time, all this money that you're putting in. Look at this list of stuff. All right. It's. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell you, don't be shocked by this list. A lot of it is under a hundred dollars. Like you probably find it under 50 bucks. If you, if you already have a first aid kit and an, a fire extinguisher that takes the care, that takes care of a lot of money. Okay. Once you have those already in place, which you should fucking anyway, uh, it's going to be a hundred bucks under a hundred. So that's, that's not so bad, but if and I'm not including a gross space. Like if you want to get a tent and you don't have a spare one, that's up by a hundred, depending on what kind of tent you want to get. I recommend at very least a three by three tent. If you're going to be doing this, that, that's enough elbow room. That's enough, you know, working space that you could probably throw a, a shelf in there and have a couple, uh, have a couple shelves going like a couple tiers of shelves. And that's, that's more than enough space for me to, do, to be doing this. And that's what my work area looks like. Get gloves. Get a lot of gloves. Just you need to clean your hands anyway, but wash your hands, do everything you need to put 70% alcohol on after, put on the gloves and do the same thing with the gloves. You, you can get away with just alcohol on your gloves, you know, after the fact, and you'll be fine. Just think food safety. You know, if they, if you're working in the food industry, this is what they would have you do anyway. That's, that's their fucking SOP anyway. Uh, like I mentioned before, 70% alcohol. I don't feel 90% alcohol is necessary. Uh, you want it to be on the surface a little longer, a little bit more water. We'll have it stay on the surface a little bit longer and that will kill a lot of the the pests and pathogens that are already there. Uh, a face mask, I'm not going to get into anything political. If you don't want to wear it, just know that there's that the there's a way bigger chance that something's going to go wrong. All right. If you if you can't wear one, totally get it. Then I recommend uh, a something that I'm going to be going over in the next slide is a flow hood so that you can it won't be as big of a deal. You can work without a mask. I've seen a lot of people doing it. I personally would just wear the mask because until I felt comfortable with my techniques, be as clean as possible. And you, that's part of the technique as well. Uh, yeah. The soap, you just need normal soap. 
I mean, you, you don't have to have disinfectant. It's doing that process in the washing already. And you, you just need to take off the dirt and whatever particles that are along with it. Get some bleach is the easiest way to, to get started. And bleach is, now it's uh, around more, but when I was trying to get this last year, poof, it was hard. So get enough bleach and alcohol in gallons. If you're really being co uh, committed, that's how I recommend you do it. Try to buy in bulk as much as you can, and it'll save you way more money. And then if you have other friends that are into this, buy in bulk together. You're, you're going to cut out a lot of money from there. Hydrogen peroxide. This is just the dollar off, off the shelf. Super easy. You're, next, you're going to need a lighter or an alcohol lamp if you can get one. The alcohol lamp, you just put in denatured alcohol. You're good to go. You, you light a little flame from a wick that's coming out of it. And it's really nice to not have to keep flicking a, a bick just to get some tools sterilized. That's what this is for. You're sterilizing your tools with that. All those things, alcohol, bleach, hydrogen peroxide, and fire, those are all going to be uh, ways to sterilize all your tools, your hands, uh, even the actual plants themselves. I also recommend having some measuring devices, a measuring cup. My, what I like to use, just because I have it around, are mason jars. Use the mason jars that have the measurements on the side. I use a quart because that's the biggest one that I can grab, that I can deal with. You know, and it not be a, a the fact that I drop it. Uh, I re also recommend getting the pint size too. If you could get a, a little smaller, uh, if you happen to have some old glass baby food jars that are around, those are good vessels to grow the actual plants in. Okay, you don't have to go glass. You could also go plastic. But if you're going to go plastic, get polypropylene five grade plastic. Okay. It's called PP5. It has a little insignia that you can look up. And uh, I don't know if it's different up in uh, your guys' neck of the woods, but it shouldn't be. It should be a industry, you know, just standard. Let's see uh, a scalpel uh, or a paring knife. You don't have to buy a scalpel. You could just do a paring knife and then like, sharpen it little bit more because they're a little dull and it's fine you can get away with it like i said a lot of the stuff people already have people already have fucking soap alcohol bleach and hydrogen peroxide you know people have a lighter this the, uh, as i'm going through all this stuff man I, I bet you could find three quarters of this stuff in your house and already be well on your way and you're only 25 percent that you have to spend all right uh, the, the next thing you're going to need is a plate or a tray. That's just something that you're working on, All right? You can work with a like ceramic dish if you want, something that you can throw into the dishwasher. I've also seen people use paper plates, All right? If you want to just don't want to deal with a mess because part of doing this is a lot of it's cleaning. Same thing with mycology, a lot of it's cleaning and just making sure that you're fucking on top of everything so you're not wasting your time and your money as, as least as possible. It's okay to make mistakes, but if you're making mistakes because you're cutting corners, that's, that's on you. You need to figure out where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. I highly recommend a scale. And the one that I have is just a jeweler scale. Uh, that's the bare minimum that I would recommend, but you can get like analytical scales. You can go into the stuff that's like two, three hundred, five hundred dollars. I don't think it's necessary. You're fine with a jeweler scale at very least. Something and that gets what down in kind of weight. Um, do we want the down to, to the hundredth able... gram? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That will get you a lot better accuracy. And then if you can have something to recalibrate, it, spend the extra money for those calibration weights, that's going to make 
your life a lot easier if you just keep on top of it all. You know, uh, make sure that it's not fluctuating. It it really does help. I highly recommend a pressure cooker. You can do a stove top. You can do. Um, I could see people getting away with a three quart, but I would get. I would spend the extra money for six or eight minimum is my preference. I, I think it gives you a lot more wiggle room. I, for my tissue culture, uh, for my um, fungal tissue culture, I actually have uh, over 20 quart. I think it's 23 quarts. It's huge. So I'm actually thinking about getting a smaller one so I could do smaller stuff and then save that other one for big jobs. Like when I'm doing my, when I'm uh, sterilizing jars for mycology, when I need a lot more space, when I'm like trying to do those uh, substrate bags and everything like that, that's when you need a lot more space. But uh, you can get away with an instant pot. All right. That, that uses PSI to cook, but I don't think it gets above 10 to 12 PSI. And you want to get up to 15 PSI to do all this work. All right. Keep that in mind, but it's okay if it only gets to 10 PSI. It just means you have to let it go for longer. That's it. It just means leave it there a little longer, an extra half hour, an extra hour, depending on what you're, uh, what you're working with. If you're trying to sterilize tools, if you're trying to sterilize media, uh, I recommend trying to do everything all at once and, and if you can, and I really recommend the bigger 20 plus quart one because you can throw everything in there and then just leave it there overnight off when it's done through going through the pressure. Don't leave anything unattended when it's going under pressure. Do not. You could leave it there overnight and it's going to cool down. You're going to wake up in the morning and you can get right to work. Set all that stuff up before, put it in there, make sure you have like an hour to two hours, depending on what you're doing. Again, if you're, if you're going about it with the bigger one, it's going to take a little bit to get up to the pressure. Just depending on like how your how many BTUs your, your kitchen, uh, can put out. Now, obviously more is going to get you there quicker, but it's going to be using more fuel. It's all up to you and how you want, how you want to spend your money. And, uh, you could also do, if you don't have a working stove top, you could just use one of those portable stove tops, like those camp. Those are the ones that you could take camping. Uh, you don't have to go electric. You could also go gas. That's the nice thing about this. You could put it in anywhere. So bear that in mind. That was a good tip from one of my friends uh, that I never really considered. And I was like, okay, cool. I can, I can do a lot more in different places. pH meter, pH drops, litmus strips. Uh, if you have a pH meter, cool. I still recommend that you get drops or litmus strips to double check the pH. Always double check whenever you can. It's, it's going to, eventually that pH meter is not going to be accurate and it's good to have a backup and they're not that expensive pH drops. I think I got mine for like 14 bucks and that's pretty reliable. Uh, notebook and journal. You need a lab journal. You need a, a lab notebook. If you want to write it down on paper, write it down on paper. If you want to do it on your computer, write it on your computer. Uh, it's all personal preference. I type faster than I scribble on a fucking piece of paper. Uh, writing things down is super annoying for me. So if I can avoid it and just put it on the computer and just kind of like dish it out real quick, it's a lot easier for me. Just go with whatever you're comfortable with. The next one, speaking of computers, is spreadsheets and Excel. This is a big help. If you're not using this, if you're not even going to be doing plant tissue culture, okay. But if uh, 
I can't recommend using some spreadsheets or a notebook enough. Uh, you need to keep track of what's going on in your grow, whether that's harvest, whether that's whatever. Just try, try to be as litigious as possible. And then you need something to put all these plants in. So I mentioned before a baby food jar. You can use a, an old jam jar. There's a lot of things that you could just repurpose and reuse. You could also just go the test tube route and buy some test tubes. Okay. There's, and you can get plastic test tubes. So if you're not comfortable with working with glass, you know, your hands are a little shaky, you're, you're disabled in some way. That's okay. You could still do this. Go with plastic, go with lab grade plastic. Okay. That's going to save you from dealing with broken glass. And it's nice because sometimes it just lasts longer in general and it's easier to write on to. Uh, yeah, it's again, personal preference. I would prefer all glass all the time. That looks way cooler to me. It feels more like a laboratory when it, everything's all glass, all my measuring stuff. But hey, it's often a lot affordable to go plastic. So just work within your budget. Everything I show, I have on this list is working within, every, I don't know who can afford this, but you should really reconsider. All right, uh, I, I should have put a, like how much things are, but you could figure it out. A lot of the stuff you already bought, it's in your house already, you already paid for it. And the stuff that you need to pay for, just look it up. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Amazon, but I do shop there. And it is really handy when I can't find something at the store. So try to buy something close by you. But if you need to get something, you need to get something. I'm not going to say you shouldn't use anything. Use whatever you need to. So the next slide is advanced supplies. Okay. This is where we're stepping out of the kitchen. Okay. If you're still in the kitchen, but you want to buy all this stuff, that's fine. I'm just saying we're getting into some more advanced stuff. This is going to cost you money, all right? I don't rec. Uh, I recommend going with the last list, building up your savings. If you can start even culturing your own plants that are rare around you, you know something that's native, possibly, uh, and find or even make a market for yourself and start selling things through Etsy or whatever. Do that, save up money, and then you could pay for everything. And then you could actually start saying, oh, this is a business charge. And you're not, you, it's gonna be more affordable in the long term. I recommend a high quality air filter. The one that I bought, I'm stepping into the more advanced supplies now. It's been a year, it's been well over a couple of years since I've even found out about this subject. But the, uh, the air filter I have is, is from Coway, C-O-W-A-Y, right? That's the best one I could find on the market. It was actually recommended from a couple of mycologists, which was the cool thing, uh, that are just fucking, uh, I think it's Myco Grow is her name. But she's just fucking killing it, man. I, I can't say enough good stuff about the mycology uh, community. They really have been a big help in trying to learn about all this stuff. I recommend that one before a flow hood because that air filter cost me a little over like 150 bucks. You could probably find it cheaper, 170. And just keep an eye out on it, put a, put a little notification on it, just have it like, have your computer look for it and notify you when it's around at a certain price, but it comes down in price. I think in a month or a couple of weeks, we're going to be having another sale for a lot of places. So Koe, bear that in mind, do your research about it. Uh, I have it going on when my windows go shut uh, during the day. When, I, when I'm not trying to bring in the hot air, it works great. I've never had an, an air filter before in my room. 
I have a lot of, I'm fucking allergic to everything. All right. I'm not sneezing anywhere near the amount that I did when I was growing up. All right. We, I live next to a forest, an oak forest. We have pollen from pines as well. Uh, we got flower pollen. I'm allergic to all that stuff. It's a good quality of life investment and it's just a little over a hundred bucks. All right. I, I really like it. And if you can get the next model up, uh, I just for it moving the C, the amount of CFMs it needs in your rooms for it to be fresh, I just recommend getting two of the the hundred dollar model, and you can put it in two different places, and that's going to be a lot better and cleaner air, and it's going to help you get a lot cleaner cultures. I really recommend it. If you want to go even higher into air filters. There's this tool called a equipment called a flow hood and man, oh man, that thing is, you can get it in a, um, I've even seen it in a one by one foot, uh, but you could get it three by three, four by two. There's so many things, but you just put it on a desk and then you could do hours of clean work, aseptic work. No problem. No mask. Uh, I still recommend gloves, but Hey, just, Stick with good protocols and you'll be fine. But that's going to decrease a lot of your mistakes. And a lot of mistakes can just be avoided if you have good, if you just follow good protocols. You know, if you, if you have good PPM gear, if you have all that stuff, I really recommend. Speaking of, P, uh, speaking of gear for protecting yourself, a lab coat or just like a full-on Tyvek suit. Like you see like the, the, uh, the bug spray guys have. It's kind of like that. You can get one that's separate, but you just put on and it's a two-piece. Or you could get one that's just like jumper status. And it covers your, uh, your, covers your beard. It, I, I don't know if it would be any match for Spartans. But uh, yeah, it covers your head, your beard. Uh, I recommend probably if you have a beard and you're going to be doing this kind of stuff, make sure to shower, obviously, but you might want to tuck in some stuff. Uh, it might help out with, uh, if you're seeing any more issues, it might be the extra uh, grooming that's going on, but it's okay. You can still just make sure you're clean. People, people have facial hair and they they still go about it just fine. And that's thanks to the Tyvek suit. And it's, I think it's just like 20 bucks. It's, I should have put it on the other one. But it is more of an advanced thing that I don't see more people doing. Yeah. Uh, the next one is microscope. That's going to be minimum like 200 bucks. You could probably get it for under 200, like 100 bucks. If you find a broken one that's really cheap and all you have to do is just fix one thing that's like 20 bucks to replace, I would go that route. If you can't afford it, you know, uh, save up as much as you can, but that's going to allow you to do Maristem culture. And that's going to allow you to get into the really complicated, more advanced uh, techniques. Lab grade glassware. So borosilicate, Pyrex glass. Uh, yeah, this is just going to make it look a lot more like a lab. All these things is going to help out a lot and I can't recommend them enough. A magnetic stirrer, that's just 30 bucks, right? If you want to get the one with a heated option, that's probably going to be like a hundred bucks. So you could just start off with a magnetic stirrer or you can make one yourself out of a fan and some magnets. You know, look it up on uh, YouTube. I found a couple videos because I was curious about it. It's very affordable on like, probably five to 10 bucks to make if you really want to get down to it and a glass bead sterilizer or induction coil sterilizer this isn't necessary oh and a back decenerator is what it's called those aren't absolutely necessary the one that i would probably go for on that's on the lower price end is an induction coil and you can make an induction coil yourself all right uh, I, I haven't looked up the price range and how much it would cost, but I know um, 
I think his name is Thermo, so, Thermo Helix. I'll have to drop, uh, I'll have to look at his profile later, but he's really cool. He makes these induction coils and all it is is just a, a coil that's wrapped out. You press a button in this box and it heats up that coil. So there's no flame, no danger. If, you're, if you don't want to deal with flame, that's the cheapest route to go without flame. That's going to help you out a lot. Okay, so induction coil. When I found out about it, I just thought it was the coolest thing. I wanted to put that in. So now we're getting into the actual what's in tissue culture, what's in the actual media. Uh, you could typically just buy it pre-made. Uh, and that's the, the next brand that I'm mentioning is Murashigi and Skug. Uh, I'm probably butchering the name, but that those are two professors that actually uh, I'm looking into going to, to the school that they discovered and did a lot of their research at, and that's uh, Riverside, uh, UC Riverside. They did a lot of work. Uh, if you're wanting to do more of your own homework, look up Murashige and, and Sku. You're going to get a couple of options for uh, buying the actual media, which cool. It, you'll keep, keep those around. You might want to check what the prices and shop around. But there's a lot of history behind it. They made a lot of forward strides into modern tissue culture to be what it is. We wouldn't be having it as widespread without this media solution. There's other ones out there. But they were basically the first to, to put it together. Uh, you need your organic fertil fertilizers. Uh, well, this is just the organic chemical components that are going into it. But agar is a extract that we get from a seaweed. Actually, I don't. I can't remember the species, so I apologize. But it's I believe it's a red red seaweed or a red kelp, one of those. And what we are after is the actual gumming uh, physics of it, like the physicality of it. And it's really useful in plant propagation because you need it to just, sometimes you need the plantlets to stay in one place while you're moving them around. Uh, and that's beneficial because if they were just going around all the time, they might be breaking into more and more pieces, which in one of the procedures I'll be telling you about, one of the advanced techniques, that's what you want. But if you don't want to do that and you want to have them up in just one place, I recommend agar. Uh, you can also use uh, gel and gum. That's another one. If you can't find agar, you could also uh, incorporate potato dextrose. There's a lot of things that are just, you can find this on the shelves at your, your like Whole Foods. If you have like one of those uh, total hippie grocery store places that you're going to find agar, go look in the jello section. Okay. This is just vegan gelatin. You're just, you need a gelatin. There's some instances where you need to use gelatins. Sucrose, it just provides energy to the cells. Let's say if you had low light conditions, you would need to apply more sucrose. Same thing with uh, anetacetol. Uh, it's a simple alcohol. Yeah, that's gonna, it's gonna help you a lot with controlling fungicides, contaminations. Uh, you can also use antibiotics and antioxidants. I don't want to get into that personally, uh, into my own work. If you find that you have a pesky uh, plant that you just can't get rid of the pathogens that are on there, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I'm going to try and avoid that at all, at all times as possible. You could do the same thing with uh, mycology lab, lab work as well. You could be using antibi uh, antibiotics as well. I cho choose not to. I don't see a reason because you 
your technique should be good enough to take care of most of the things. There might be a time when you need to use this, but just say, use it sparingly is how I'm going about it. I don't see a reason to have it in every single one of my cultures. Yeah, this is just a, another uh, just table from one of the textbooks that I was mentioning before. This is just a breakdown of what is in each culture and what you might want to be using. So you have a woody plant, medium, and if you, this can be used on any plants, guys, mostly all plants. So don't feel limited with just one species, okay? You can, uh, I'm looking into working this on my, um, my vanilla orchids. And yeah, it's the same thing that we get vanilla from. We get vanilla from vanilla orchids, it's an orchid. So I got a couple of those, they're super expensive and rare to find, but you can still find them. I, that's going to be on my future nursery. That's going to be one of the backbones. And if I find out that people aren't into it and don't want to buy it. I'll take it off, but I'll still have all my cultures. I'm not going to give away those things. They're fucking cool to me. It's like my little pet, my, my little pet. Yeah. This is just a breakdown of all the preparation that your media might need and everything you're going to, uh, I, I I'm showing this because you could just go out and give this list to your grow store. They're going to hand you everything and you don't need to get MS media pre-made. You can make it yourself for probably a lot more affordable if you're making it in bulk. Okay. This is just going over the inorganic nutrients uh, pretty, and what they do. Nitrogen is for leaf growth, chlorophyll, amino acids, uh, Phosphorus, mare stem growth, fatty cell, fatty cell membranes, DNA production. That sounds pretty fucking important. Want to make sure my plant is able to produce DNA. Uh, yeah, we got cell division, root formation, root development. This is, this is really, I recommend that people, even if you're just beginning, slow, slow down and look at each one of the, these things. I didn't look at it in the very beginning of when I started really getting into it, but it starts to make sense when you see issues with your plants. Okay. If you have this knowledge and you see something fucked up happening with your roots, well, maybe you're missing some K. Uh, yeah. Uh, just move on from here. D this just inorganic micronutrients. Look, you got you can't even fix nitrogen without some materials. So it, it all relates to each other. Keep it in mind. Uh, I feel like a lot of conventional growers are going to do just fine with tissue culture. You know, once they understand that, hey, you just need these things, these tools, these components, and the understanding of what to do step by step, you're there. All right. Please don't feel insecure about this. Even if you're an organic grower, fuck it. Learn about it just for the sake of learning and you'll be, you'll be that much better off. You know, listen to when the other people, the non-organic growers are talking, you might learn a thing or two. That's how I learned was I learned organic. Then I learned conventional just through talking to my friends that were conventional. Yeah, you got uh, some plant growth regulators, auxins. That's going to give you shoots and more just control of how things are growing. And it's produced at the apical meristem. And that's just at the very, very tip. That's the new, the newest growth there is. We got cy uh, cytokinin hormones as well. This stimulates cell division. And another one that I thought I put on here, uh, gibberellins, that's more shoot growth as well. And I, I feel like I'm glossing over. I probably meant to put more in here, but it's okay. No, no worries. If the grand idea of it all is you need these different hormones to go through different processes. And this is what's kind of controlling how things are growing in vitro. When, you're, when the plants aren't in the forest or in the desert or wherever they come from. 
this is what they're producing on, on, out on their own. These are biochemical components that are already happening in the forest. You know, I, I behind me, look at me. This is a bunch of oaks behind me. There's, there's got to be hormones going on. This is what I think a lot of people will, are, should stop. And if you can pause this and, you know, take a little snapshot if you need to, go ahead. This is just a simple home media recipe that I got from the PDF I was mentioning. Uh, yeah, it's half a cup of table sugar. Okay, fucking table sugar. Just sick crust. Uh, one cup of water. I'm sure plenty of people got some fucking water. Uh, in a Sotol tablet, that's something you're going to have to order. I don't think you got that. You know, grandma's got that in her fucking cupboard. Uh, vitamin tablets with thiamine. That's pre. you can get that at the grocery store. Uh, same thing with the agar flakes. If you can't find it at the grocery store, order it online. This part I had up higher, but I wanted to get to last. Uh, it's a half cup, half cup stock solution. And this is the fertilizer. What they recommend here, I left it here because it's verbatim. I want to get it as verbatim as possible. Miracid, Mir I think is how it's pronounced. That's from miracle Grow. If you want to buy from there, whatever. If that's all you got, that's all you got. I'm not going to judge. You do your thing. You, you can only afford what you can afford. I personally think you would be better off with, um, if you're going to go that route of conventional, is the uh, Jax, Jax fertilizer. So basically what Red uses and a bunch of people use for, for cannabis. That's been used in lab agricultural experiments for decades. Okay, it's lab proven. It's, it's been in a lot of experiments. If you look up and read some, some peer reviewed journals. It's now, would this be like the whole Jack's recipe when you're growing? Like you got to add the, uh, the salt to it and everything or just the Jack's powder? Uh, I, so I mentioned Jack's, but I'm not familiar with their whole line. I feel like they, ha they got to have just a basic line that has... Uh, the reason I showed you guys what I did, the whole fucking chemistry breakdown that was probably a bunch of numbers and letters going around, twirling around your head. That's important because you can look on the back of the jacks and see what's there, okay? And add whatever's missing. I, like I said, I'm not, I don't use jacks. I probably will be with my future experiments because it seemed, I, ha, I use Murashige and Skook. I have a, a pre-done uh, media. That's already there. It's got its hormones in there. It's got everything I need. I don't have to fucking worry about it. But as I get more advanced and start doing this more on my own, uh, I think you should look into that. I, I just wanted to stop for a little bit and have people realize that the PDF that, uh, tissue culture in a home kitchen. I, I can't uh, go back and look at it. Uh, that was made, I think in the eighties, something like that. Cause the pictures are so fucking, so fucking grainy, you know? And then I could tell all the wood finishing. I was like, yeah, this is eighties vibes, you know, eighties dad vibe. Uh, but yeah, it just goes to show you 40 years ago, they were fucking doing this in the kitchen. All right. And then this is this is what they're using. It's super easy. Don't be intimidated. Just become informed. All right. Don't be afraid of uh, messing up either. We'll get into the more advanced recipe. I'll just leave this up here if anyone wants to take a screenshot. This is what I meant when you look at the back of the Jax, you know, for, for example, Jax. It's going to hopefully have everything in here already, right? Everything that's listed uh, besides the sucrose and the agar, uh, it's probably going to, it might have, have thiamine. It, it just might. If, uh, like I said, I'm not familiar with Jax. I'm just using that as an example so everyone can get to base because I don't want to fucking quote 
miracle grow all the time. It felt gross to even say it that first time. Common terms in micropropagation, explant, plant part or tissue used to initiate tissue culture process. I thought I'd put this here because I've been saying these things as we've been going on and I've been trying to explain as I go, but some of them I already have a full slide for it. So I left it to here. Subculture, it's just subdividing the culture that you were already using. All right, this is stage two in micropropagation. We're gonna get to that. Micro shoots, it's just the shoots developing in culture and cultures. Same thing with micro cuttings, just micro shoots again, but they're medium and they're about to be induced for rooting. Micro cuttings uh, can also be referred to as cuttings that are going ex vitro. There's in vitro and there's ex vitro. In vitro is just the plant developing in a aseptic conditions. All right, ex vitro is out of those conditions. Plantlets, yeah, it's just a plant derived from the micropropagation process. And before we get into the different stages, can I get a dab product? Yeah, I think we can use a dab product. Yeah, absolutely. I feel bad because Goddess is away, but Goddess, she's been, she's been not good on her own. So how's everyone feeling? You know, we, not we, don't, too, it, we yeah. don't actually like wait for this thing to smoke. So it's just a good reason to do it again. <laughs> it's, I, it was a good excuse for me to stop and have a toe, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, good, it's it's a lot of information you're throwing out, man. So. Sorry, Carrie, we all shut the fuck up. Go ahead. Oh, no. No, go ahead. Uh, needed some time to just pack a bowl. I think I'll do another one if you guys want to talk a little bit but uh just like i if you guys want to answer a question for me how how does it feel so far that did i am i covering the baby steps enough or is it too broad it's a lot of it it's a lot of information right now it's just you know okay. the, just, you know figure, figuring out what what all is you know just i yeah it's just getting through it this is all new to me like this one is right it's it's one that i've always felt was a little too out of my reach so you know i'm just trying to pick up everything you say and, and I, see what i feel confident in in my in that i could definitely uh go out of my go and try this and uh possibly have success then when i but i like i uh, but what I would do is I'd watch, I'm going to end up watching this episode for at least two or three times, if not more, because you'll right now it's just kind of the wham, here it is. So I see Rick's coming back in here. He must have jumped out there. Um, Like, here's all the information. Like Pluff said, you're just kind of getting broadsided almost in a way. Okay. You absorb it, but like, you're not, you're not throwing anything at me that seems uh, unachievable or uh, un unobtainable, undoable. It okay, also is good. completely doable. And like I said, it's just the stuff that you don't understand. It's just like when you go and buy a reference book, anything, right? You don't usually just read it that one time through. You go back a couple times and um, you might not watch this whole show uh, two or three times. You might watch it all once or twice and then just go back to, okay, I remember this Spartan part was 45 minutes in or whatever and just search for those uh, specific points. Yeah, if I, if I decide to start looking into this, you know, like start saving a cut or clean a cut or, you know, with uh, hop lighting being such a fucking thing nowadays, you know, if this is something I decide to, it it is great that all this information is here to, you know, start to finish, you know, I, I, you know, I might not be able to do it tomorrow, but um, if it would, it's nice to know that all the information is in one video to be able to fucking, you know, get through it. So. At least by the end of it, I hope we'll get there. If not, part two coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, my hope is all the home breeders, whether that's you're breeding a fucking tomato or you're breeding, you know, the plant that we all love. Uh, 
that they can incorporate this knowledge that they can use and do at home and citizen science pushing the way it should be. There should be more citizens doing this kind of stuff and experimenting a little bit and advancing how we just go forward in general. Because that's how we got to all of the plants that we have today. It was people just using what they had and pushing a little further with whatever knowledge that they had at the time from their family or, you know, we live in the age where, like I was saying before, I, I have hundreds of books and I have a very small space. I don't want that in, uh, I'd rather be using that space instead of books for my other hobbies that take up actual space. So I get virtual knowledge. I get all those texts and virtual. So it's, we've come a long way. Take advantage of what you can. You know, like I said, if anyone needs any of these books, let me know. I'm not going to say how to get them on live because I don't know if that's, it's going to be taken away if I do that. Cause it seems like that always happens. Come to me, message me and I'll get you these books. All right. I'll get you this knowledge. I have no problem doing it this way. You can take what you see here and you could start reading about it or you know like i mentioned before there's a text to speech app so you can listen to it three five ten times however many times you need sometimes i listen to things three times it's it's okay that's how we learn it's very natural don't get down on yourself you don't need to have a phd in all this stuff to understand in the beginning no one I've done lots of shit with this stuff that's way over my fucking head. And that's only because I've like in the middle of the fucking process, I've listened to the same thing three or four times in a row. Cause I'll be damned if I ain't like sometimes shit just don't sink in. It'll be, you know, I'll, I'll have to do it a hundred times before I figure it out. So that's cool, man. I have dyslexic okay. friends <laughs> and they tell me, Oh, I can't, I can't read that. And then, I try to show them this book and then they just, they can't listen to the robot voice. So if you could find another app that you might have to pay 10 bucks, but it gives you an actual voice that sounds like someone's ch- like giving you a lecture on this book, it's worth the 10 bucks. And it, it can play, the, what I have is it can play PDF, it can play EPUB, uh, yeah, EPUB documents as well. So that's like Kindle stuff you'd see from there uh i i can't recommend it enough it's gotten me a lot of knowledge without having to sit down in front of a computer or sit down at a book and or like at a desk you if you want to read like that cool but there's times like i said i want to drive i got i got time to kill and why not learn while i for my entertainment yeah I'm uh I'm all squared off. You guys ready to go? Let it rip. Yeah, I just finished posting your link up in um the show description there with everything else. It's kind of funny. I was ready to get to do that when you started up the last bit, but when you screen share, it uh, takes up the part of the screen that uh, uh, you click the button to go to YouTube. But I'm good to go. So, but that's also why I'm not much in the, the chat right now because my screen disappears and I'm paying attention to what you're saying. Actually, is cool. I yeah. appreciate it. If uh, if anyone's questions aren't answered in the beginning, put them at the end and we'll get to them. Uh, I'll try to rush through as much as I can so we can get to those questions. All right. All right. So we have a. Uh, yeah, we have micro propagation growth stage procedures. Stage one is establishment. So this is when you're getting rid of a lot of the pathogens or get doing the cleaning part, really, uh, and prepping them and cutting like what the, the choice plants are going to be. Shoot multiplication. That's number two. You're Really just letting everything develop a little more, uh, start absorbing the fertilizer, start getting it used to that environment. Then it's going to be going into root formation. All right. That's really cool because you could do this in 
vitro under aseptic conditions, or you could put it into a plug, all right, and just cut out that time frame. It might be a little, I, I think it's more affordable to do that, but I might be wrong. This is another example of keeping an Excel spreadsheet or whatever spreadsheet of all of the things that you're buying and how much they cost and seeing how much that they, how fast you get through them and when they expire, keeping all that information there. And stage four is just acclimate acclimation and that's what you see in the greenhouses okay this is when they're in the greenhouses they're a little warmer they're getting more humidity they're starting to get used to things in the real world out of the bubble here's a illustration that's straight from the book uh, i'll like i said this is all for educational purposes I am not using this for monetary gain. None of it. Uh, this is in uh, Kester's and Hartman's plant propagation, just for reference, a lot of the things that I'm going to be showing. Stage one, you see like here's just a little branch. Boom, you cut a couple of these. You got some shoots. That takes two to three months. Now, it could be a different time frame, okay, depending on the species. But just keep in mind that this is mainly profitable and makes most sense at a large scale. So if you are with a group of people or some kind of uh, deal and you're dealing with all the tissue culture, that would be the best way to do it, the most affordable way. And you can split up costs and do everything that way. And this is the most beneficial in keeping stuff around. Not so much, oh, I can do this and use this as my, uh, as my cuttings. You can do that if you start developing enough cuttings, then it's not a big deal. And you start doing things perpetual all year long. Another benefit of tissue culture is you could do it all year long. And then it starts falling on, oh, I always have a backup now. After a couple of months, you always have a backup of everything. If you time it out and do everything appropriately and save up enough money for, let's say a fridge, okay? Get a fridge and throw this device called a cool bot on there, or sorry, get a freezer, one of those box freezers that's super cheap, they're very efficient in electricity. And you put a cool bot on there and that fluctuates the temperature to more, to, to better temperatures for keeping these in viable condition, okay? You might even have two and have one be like a, a much cooler freezer. And that's where you start putting things like cryo, uh, cryopreservations. All right. At, this is, I'm trying to get to things that we can do, but it's more advanced. It's going to cost you money and it, it's doable, which is the questions I've been getting in. It's like, can I do this more advanced thing? Yeah. Under these conditions, but you got stage one, that's going to take two to three months. Uh, cycle one, you're just letting things grow. Cycle two, you got shoot growth and small clumps start developing. That's when you want by cycle three. Uh, I would start looking into putting them into plugs. And that's stage three over here. And you even see ex vitro. Yeah, a, a lot of companies, I've seen them actually put like this plastic sheet over it. That's also a little like permeable. So it still gets air exchange. And you're just keeping everything alive with a soilless media here. Okay, but you could also do it in a flask if you want. And you could use these flasks and put them on their side. You're gonna get a lot more surface area to work with. But I just feel like I, I would recommend doing this more, but you might find that you get a lot better results in vitro. Do both, try it out, see what, uh, you can afford what works better there. 
and but also the results with the with all of that it might even the another thing i wanted to mention is it might take an extra month more ex vitro right you can make things grow faster by the way by changing the hormone levels and formulas all right bear that in mind that's why i said it just depends but it's going to take you a couple of months to go about this uh i'll just say it one of the questions we had was which one is better cuttings or uh micro propagation cuttings just i'll just flat out say it all right if um, unless you're thinking of doing your own breeding and you want to scale up and you're starting to do things on your own and you're i uh, i know a couple of breeders that are just interested in this this is where it would be beneficial okay have a lot of stuff that isn't rooted yet guess what the law is in my in my neck of the woods all right it's not a fucking plant until it has roots so you can really scale things up and not uh, i that's playing that's dancing around some some laws though okay that's trying to find a loophole but it it's true all right it's not considered a plant unless it's rooted it's just plant material now if you get in trouble for that plant material it just depends on where you live where i live no it's hemp we can send hemp around hemp material is legal where i'm at and guess what it's all hemp until there's th a certain level of thc none of this stuff has thc that's another point i want to make too but uh super shady talk to your lawyer I'm not a fucking lawyer. Uh, I'm a nerd that likes plants. All right. Uh, just be careful out there. Uh, don't use me as a fucking excuse. All right. But I, I uh, have some friends that move stuff around. I think this is the way to go about it. And then once you have enough plants, you're good to go. Yeah. Like I mentioned before, stage one establishment, uh, that's where you're just best disinfecting everything. You're establishing everything, making sure everything's stable and to, to go into shoot development. Uh, like I said, you can have stuff grow and it doesn't have roots yet. How fucking perfect. Uh, stage one, explants can include leaf discs. I'm gonna show an example of that. So you can grow plants from leaves, from pieces of your leaves. Uh, internodal stem sections. So that's just the scions that you cut out anyway for cuttings. Just bear that in mind, but it's one node instead of multiple like three, five nodes that people would be typically taking. Uh, yeah, you could do single or multiple multi-nodes. Single is gonna take you longer than multi-nodes. If you have more plant material, that's more photosynthesis happening. It's, it's going to help out the growth rate a lot more. And it's, it'll be more likely to succeed. Preparation for establishing cultures. Yeah, you're going to please start off with pathogen-free material first. You can take care of a lot of pathogens and under a certain technique, viruses as well. But don't let it get to that point, obviously. But things happen. Yeah, no, I got it. Your, but your best bet in things succeeding is clean material. Same thing with cuttings. Same thing with the seeds. You can't just make seeds and it takes away the uh, hop latent virus. Thyroid. Okay. Just because you made new seed doesn't mean you fucking got rid of the problem. All right. And if you're a breeder doing that, and selling it off, especially saying that that's true and it's uh, it's clean because you put it into seed, that's pretty jerky. Now, I, I don't agree with that. You don't know the science. Go get it tested and fucking prove that it's clean. Okay, if you're gonna be claiming it's clean, 
back it up. If, if put your money where your mouth is. And then at very least, that's a selling point too. So you'd probably be making more money and you'd make up whatever you lost in the test. All right. I, I can't say what the test, how much the test costs. You're better off testing and knowing for sure if it's something happened. Okay. Don't use, don't be claiming stuff is clean if you don't have the actual paperwork to back it up. I, I don't feel like I should have to explain myself on that. But yeah, please use clean cultures. Please prove that you're actually cleaning stuff. And that's one of the biggest things that I want to say here is don't make problems for some other person just because you wanted to make some cash or whatever. You know, if it's an honest mistake, okay, own up and start testing your stuff. And then uh, I would buy from that guy who said, oh, I didn't understand it before. But then I learned about it. And then, hey, I did it the right way. Try it out. I can guarantee my word now. I respect that way more than just, oh, no, no, it's deal with it kind of a thing. So please have some ethics. Part of the reason I kind of didn't want to, I walked away from tissue, uh, from biotechnology for a little bit is because I saw some shady ideas with ethics. Like when I was pr uh, proposing that ethics were kind of one of the more things that we should pay attention to, one of my teachers at the time was like, ooh, he went to the next slide and there was just dollar signs. I'm not fucking kidding. It's like, oh yeah, this is, you're going to get, a, you're going to make a lot of money here. Just don't rip people off. I, I think we are all fucking humans and we're all stuck on a fucking piece of floating rock in space. We should respect each other. And that, that's all I'll say on that. Please use clean cultures. Uh, try to reduce the potential uh, contamination. You're going to be dealing with fungi, viruses, and other pathogens. All right, just uh, I'll show how you can go about it with the different material. Uh, I actually don't think I had a slide on that, but you would just be, by cleaning it, you would be using a 1% to 3% bleach solution. Okay, so out of one liter, have that 3% be bleach. All right, easy math. I love metric because I can do shit like that. It's so much easier. Uh, try a 1% first is the best thing that I can advise for cleaning because you don't, that's, that might damage the plant if you get up to 3%. So go 1, 15, 20. Uh, the max I would go would be 25%. Uh, but like I said, there's other ways to go about it that won't kill your plant. You can use other, other things. You don't, the antibacterial is the last thing I would go for. And your, it's crazy how small you get. But like I mentioned at the very beginning, you could take one cell and have that grow into a whole plant. It's going to take some time. It's going to get there. But that theory was one of the coolest things to, that started everything we're talking about. And yeah, just one millimeter. You kidding me? That's so fucking small. But yeah, like I said, you could get down to a cell. So just bear that in mind. Keep everything clean. Keep all the components where they need to be have everything, the conditions good, you're all set. I recommend taking bigger cultures. Technically, you could do the smallest, like a single cell, but it's going to take more time. Take as big as you can afford to cut off and work with it. Uh, the... The only way... 
it really helps out. You're going to see a lot better reduction and losing a lot more cultures as well, because they're going to be able to fight off anything that happens in any of the cultures. If you miss something, some of this stuff and all this time is just observing, making sure everything is going right. Yeah, don't be afraid to mess up or anything too, but it's going to happen. You're going to see some gross stuff. This is just some actual pictures of what I was talking about. So you guys can put words to actual what's happening. We just have some cuttings here. Uh, there, they might be just soaking in some water or some medium. These are just what you take donors from. This right here is a leaf punch out. These are leaves. Like I mentioned before, you can do leaf culture, but it's going to take a little bit of time. But how fucking cool. Those things that you pull off, you know, because they're in the way of, uh, think about how many leaves we just threw out. And what? Well, oh, that could have been backup plan. You know, you don't have to take away whole nodal cuttings anymore. I always thought that was cool. Yeah, you, um, you also just got some bud cuttings too, some apical meristems. Uh, here is just some shoot tips that are starting to develop a little more. They're at the very beginning stage. All right, so this is just stage one uh, continued. Sterilize everything tools. Uh, you can use a lighter or that alcohol lamp I mentioned before to flame sterilize. Be careful. I didn't mention this before on what exactly you're watching out for explosions wise, but if you're using alcohol and you're using this flame sterilizing technique, be careful. All right. This is where I would only be doing that under a flow hood. You would probably be better off using a 10% a bleach solution. Okay. So please know what you're working with and know that you're working in small spaces. And one of the things I can't believe I think I glossed over was a, it's called a still air box. All right. And that's something that you can use. You don't need air filters, but. I got one to use along with it. That's gonna increase my likelihood of success. Yeah, I have worked with a still air box, a SAB my whole time. And I've had a lot of success. Just be clean, use whatever you, you have to work with whatever you need to. Make sure that you're very careful in that SAB. I've heard a lot of war stories of people putting a lighter after not letting it fully degas and poof, big fireball, big fucking fireball. Be careful. I, I'm sorry to go off the rails a little bit, but that is something that's important if you're using a sab. Yeah, just sterilize all your vessels and tools, uh, you can either do this in a, uh, that's why I said to get a pressure cooker. You could just throw that in while you're making media as well. And otherwise you could be doing a flame sterilization, but that has its dangers, just like I mentioned. And just overall disinfestation that can occur with just washing everything as well. So it's a lot of cleaning. It's a lot of making sure you're covering your, your shit. Uh, treat, or you're going to be from there cutting your plant material into small little, piece, uh, little pieces, and you can just run it under tap water. A lot of tap water, like especially where I'm at, you have a chlorophyll already in it. And then I think you have we have chloramines as well. So it's getting in disinfected while it's getting washed off of any dirt and anything like that. And you can also 
uh, treat them by dipping them in alcohol or just spraying them. So this is where you'd be, uh, you could put it in just like a vessel and then move it out. And then you're gonna be washing the actual plant material in 10 to 15% bleach. I, I said 25% before, I think that was a little too high. Uh, just stick with 10 to 15% for now. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some plants that can deal with 30, but you're better off not hurting your plants. That's most likely you're, you have that and that's all you have. So if it's all you have, stay safe with 10 to 15. I wouldn't go past that. Also that I didn't put it in here, but you're going to put a drop of dish soap or just some kind of surfactant. Uh, it's, it's going to help dislodge like any um, particles of dust or anything like that. It's going to help wash everything off. Yeah, it should help a lot. And it's something we all have. I think I was, I'm probably going to use Dr. Bronner's. Going to give that a shot. Uh, otherwise, you can just fucking use Dawn. Here's uh, just what I've been talking about. You just put it all on a vessel. And this is a stir plate. I mentioned it before. You, this looks like a like it would cost like eighty bucks or some something like that, something ridiculous. You just you can find one for thirty bucks on Amazon. I'm actually been wanting to get one, like I said before, that's heated. But I think I'm just going to give up on that for now because I can't find one that's under a hundred. That's worth it. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, what the one I've been looking at was uh, Intellilab, Intellab. So go ahead and check that out. This is pretty cool. It comes in handy. Otherwise, you'd have to be mixing it by hand and just stirring it. It's pretty fucking annoying. If you can afford 30 bucks, I think it's a perfect upgrade that saves you a lot of hassle and thinking about shit. You could be working on other cultures while you're doing this stuff and then swap it out. It's all about scheduling yourself and making the most out of your time. Yeah, and just make sure you're getting the agitation, just dislodging anything. Uh, you, this is just, we're still on stage one. Uh, you're going to need a medium selection. Medium selection can be based on the species and cultivar. So just bear that in mind. Like I mentioned before, you can read some papers about the plants that you're working with. So read up on plant tissue culture and hemp, for example, to know, to, to have a gauge for what you're going to be dealing with. I mean, it's, it's not going to be the same deal as a uh, citrus. I think citrus has, I think it needs more iron. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be different formulations. Uh, manipulation of auxins and cytokines occur and can control the development. So this is just root shoots, or sorry, uh, shoot development. And, the, and it's controlling how fast things grow. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be messing around with that as much. I'm going to try to back off as much as possible with the hormones and use only what I have to. Because a lot of this stuff, if you read the, uh, the safety charts on it, it's, it's hazardous material. And one thing I didn't put on the materials that you should have is a broken glass trash bin and a hazardous waste materials bin. And then take that hazardous waste to the appropriate place, right? Or wherever it is near you. Please do this. Make sure you're safe. Don't stick your hand. Make sure everything's properly, uh, like has a warning sticker on it and gets your attention because you don't want to put your hand in the broken glass uh, bin. Make sure you have one of those uh, special bins for it and not just an average bin. Yeah, it's... Ah. I've seen somebody, that's why I'm cringing, put their hands in there. Sorry. Yeah, you, uh, 
with all of the hormones, it's just something to bear in mind. Be safe. Okay. You don't have to use them all, but some of them are in the media. So for the Murashi and Skoog, I think they have, they have some hormones in there that would be considered hazardous waste. So make sure you're putting it in the appropriate place. Yeah. Off my soapbox on that one. Auxiliary shoots need a moderate amount of uh, BA, kinetin. And these are, I'm pretty sure these are auxins. I should have wrote that down and gone back a little bit. But yeah, this is just all that's going on here. Uh, I believe you're using cytokines as well in this stage. Stage two, shoot multiplication. Plants are expanded into cultures of micro shoots. Each shoot is transferred into a new medium. So you could have a cluster in there uh, and that's what you want. And then you cut them away. You started with one and then it expands into a cluster. Cut that out and you make more. And it's up to you if you want to move it on to the next stage or go back into multiplication. This is when we're uh, making more of everything. This is a critical part of what, like, if you're trying to have a large stock, this is a, all the stages are important, but bear this in mind. It's, it's going to save you some time if you just move on to the next stage. And if you repeat the process, you're going to need more time. So it might add another two, three months to it if you expand it anymore. So basically you're taking the work that you've done and you're just multiplying it. So you don't have to start from the beginning again. Yeah, exactly. This is where if you're trying to keep things going and like to back up, this yeah. is super important. This is okay. where you can um, really expand out a lot or very little. It's up to you from here on out. And this can take four to four to eight weeks. So the four weeks uh, is what I more see for cannabis. But you might have that one plant that just she's a slow grower. Uh, yeah. So for micro shoots produced in ranges from five to twenty five or more, that's what I was saying. You could, have, you could take that five, or you could make twenty five. Or you can make a hundred or a thousand or so many, but this is all just takes time, but it's a logarithmic scaling. All right. From one to two to four to 16. That's, that's right. what we're basically dealing with. That's why I said, okay, this is where you're, you need to plan ahead and know what, where you want to be. Yeah, here's uh, examples of like an actual lab that does this at the scale that I've been talking about that need thousands to millions that it's going on. They're, they're fucking crazy. It's, it's, it's going to be <laughs> fun working awesome, on awesome, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really cool. This is how we get cheap potatoes. Okay, whether I like it or not, this is how we get these potatoes going to everybody. This is why potatoes are so widespread. Obviously, it was first developed with people, you know, outside of a lab, but then it was a cash crop. People got to have their potatoes. Yeah, you could just see here, there's, uh, there's every picture that I see is a lot of women doing this work. It's very fine to detail work where you're cutting things up. You're, you have to be very gentle doing all this stuff. It's not like if a, a dude can't do it, but a lot of the pictures that I've seen, it's cool to see women uh, doing all this work and how critical a role they're playing. Like without this, we wouldn't have the scales that we do in agriculture. So it's cool to see them doing, the, uh, being involved in the scientific community and such a crucial development. Here we have uh, one of the examples. This might be a glass jar, but you could also get it in plastic, I've seen. But I, 
as you can see here, this top is pretty special. It's slightly perforated. Okay, so that means it's you can breathe. It can breathe and do everything. Uh, from here, we can see that it's just all being spread out and, and individually cut out. I think, what are they culturing? I think it might be strawberries or geria. Anyway, you see them, they just have a paper towel here. You don't need a plate. You know, you could just use a paper towel. You use that, boom, throw it out. You're done. You don't have to clean. Uh, you don't have to clean as much. It's less for you to think about. So just bear that in mind. There's a bunch of different ways to go about it. It's pretty cool. You see how just they're being very delicate and putting each one in there. And this one might grow out to be thousands more, or it might be put out to grow. So that will be uh, sold out in like four, four to six months. At stage three, that's when we got our roots coming in. Shoots are transferred. You got new media coming in as well. Uh, typically, you would want to change out your media one to two weeks. All right. Uh, it depends on your plant. Some plants grow slower. Uh, some plants grow faster. Some will need more of the fertilizer. Some will need more hormones. Some might not need anything. Okay, so just make sure you're aware of the species that you're working with. Uh, cannabis, it, if you just use MS Media, you're fine. Put some sugar in there too, maybe uh, just as a backup, you're fine. And it's not that expensive and it saves a lot of time and having to, you need a lot less materials as well. So I, I recommend the MS Media to start off with. Uh, yeah. Here you, like I mentioned before, all the transferred stuff is going into new cultures, is going into new, it's getting more food. And this is when they don't have any roots still, okay? Now you have more auxins that are being induced, but they will later be transferred out and then you won't put those auxins in there anymore, all right? So keeping it to a minimum, is what I recommend because eventually they're just going to be cut out anyway. And you're going to be saving money in the long run because you're using less of the auxins. The new media can either be a gel or a soilless greenhouse substrate, like I mentioned before. Okay. That's just bear in mind, it might take a little longer with the soilless media. Experiment, try it out, see what works for you. One might be cheaper, but it might take more time, but you're okay with that. If you're okay with that and you just leave it in a greenhouse anyway, cool. You know, this is what you're going to be getting your cuttings from. These are going to be your new moms. These are going to be your new donor plants. They're starting clean and fresh if you did everything correctly. Okay. And if they weren't clean, I'll, I'm going to be talking about how to clean them a little more with some more advanced techniques uh, in a bit. So one of the uh, recipes, the ratios for the soilless media that you could use is just two parts peat, one part vermiculite. You don't have to use peat. It's just a horticultural standard. You could use uh, cocoa core if you want. Just make sure it's sterilized is basically what they're getting at. And you can do that in your pressure cooker. See how it's being used in every single stage. I, it's one of those things that it's worth spending the money on to me. Uh, from here, they have to be put into a high humidity environment. Okay, they're, they're, this is when the roots are coming in, they're starting to get used to uh, taking in more food now. They're starting to really ramp everything up. So you need that right environment to get it all settled in. Here's just an example of what of both in vitro and ex vitro from this stage. It looks really cool. I like seeing this. It it it's just cool to me. If I if I was just shown this so much earlier in high school, 
and said, hey, this is why you pay attention in school. So you can fucking do this kind of shit for money. Uh, yeah. Uh, I also like that I could just go to Cocoa Core and Vermiculite, you know, or Perlite, whatever, whatever you choose. I'm, I want to experiment with Cocoa Core and uh, rice holes. And you that's just, like, just uh, huh? you just like bury your agar when it comes out of something like that in your like plugs or something, or do you like wash off that that agar mix before you uh, go to um, you know like uh, say pot or put those you know into the, your uh, soilless mix? So you when you uh, are you are you asking how you get it in there or how you get it out or both? Uh, yeah, a little bit of all that because okay, that, that okay. one's got me a little curious. Sure, right sure. So maybe I didn't explain uh, the media preparation as as in depth as I should have. Agar is cool, or you, it, it could be another gel. All right, it doesn't have to be iron. It's just this kind of physical material is typically made in a solution. All right, so it's water and it's not gelled up when it's heated up. So you put it in, heat it up, it cools down and it becomes gelled. And some people even put it at a slant so they can increase the surface area and put in more plantlets. So that's, that's a trick that I learned from, um, from preserving fungal tissue culture is that's, it's called a, a slant, tissue slant, but yeah. Uh, you can, um, and then you can take it out and you have to clean off all that. So with water, and then you hopefully already have the new vessel and culture ready to put in there. So you wait for it to cool down and then you stick it in there. And, uh, these are probably in their first stage or second stage of rooting. Because it does, I don't see any signs of tampering. All right. So I would, like I said, try both. I feel like this way is so much more approachable to people. Just take some uh, two parts peat, one part vermiculite. Boom. You didn't have to make any, you didn't have to measure any gels, any powders. Uh, just make sure that you sterilize this media or this uh, soilless media, okay? Whether it's the uh, coconut core or whatever you got. Both have to be sterilized no matter what. Yeah, this is just, like I mentioned before, There's, it's just awesome to see how many fucking plants are dealing with all right this is where the plugs came in handy okay i i don't know if this is where it, we got the plug trays from uh like just normal propagation for for agricultural propagation or it came from tissue culture but man it's cool to see something that i use already and have boom and then uh, I think you can, I don't know if you, you can use the root riots. Uh, I think you should be fine uh, if you have a bunch of those or whatever. I don't know what Canadian root riots are, what, whatever, uh, maple riots. I got, I got everyone's attention on that one. Trying to wake you up, keep you in. Yeah, you can just see examples of how they're doing everything. They're using the forceps and everything. It's pretty easy and straightforward. You could do this kind of work in high school. You could. It's nice, uh, nice to have some kids to do all this this work for you. Oh, look, yeah, I'll pay you ten bucks. Just do a couple hundred of these plants. There you go. You got it. Put them to work. Uh, we're at the last stage. We're we're done, you guys. Uh, and then here's just is questions. And then I'm going to show you some pictures. Once the plantlets are all rooted, this is when they're going to head to the greenhouse. Okay. Greenhouse conditions 
it should be obvious high humidity, right? It's exactly the conditions you want, the environment that you want. You're going to be gradually exposing them to lower humidity and higher light over time. So just be very careful at this point. I fucked up a lot of plants that I bought from, uh, from nurseries, okay? Because the nurseries have that 50% shade on. Make sure that you're acclimating everything appropriately. And then from here, it's ready for sale or to your garden. Boom. And then here's just some pictures of that. And yeah, you can pretty sure that's plastic over here. Like I mentioned before, they put like a film on top of the trays to keep that humidity more stabilized. So they're not constantly fluctuating in a big greenhouse. And then the, the next stage is right here. So they're, they might be fluctuating with these ones just because they can handle it. Yeah, very delicate work. Uh, they're just putting on some uh, oxen. And you're good to go. This is where I was talking about where it's ex vitro, it looks like. This is where we're getting to our cuttings. All right. I hope this all looks very familiar. This is the easiest part. It's got to be. But it might take you a little longer. Just like how cuttings do, depending if on the cultivar and you know, how, how old the plant material was that you got it from. Yeah, it's really cool. Look at how much plant material is here. This is, this is fucking crazy. This is the coolest part of it all. I love seeing this stuff. Uh, yeah, you can see here that this is just an agar base and then they just switching it from the substrate again. Now we're at techniques. Uh, I'll stop here. Anyone good or should I go on? Anyone have questions? No? Okay. So techniques, you got seed culture. Okay. You can take your seeds and just put them in, uh, put them into micropropagation right away. Right. There's different ways of going about it. You could just leave it, put it in with the shell itself. Or you can crack the shell and put the embryo in there. And it'll be fine. Like you don't have to wait for that pesky shell to come off. And then that might have, you don't have to deal with uh, disinfecting even more. You'll just still have to disinfect. But maybe if something was iffy around that shell around some time. Yeah, just keep in mind uh, that. But this was actually... Remember 1960s orchids? Yeah, this is when this was first starting to be developed. And it's been mainly used on orchids. Uh, like I said, I'm, the, I'm not really into orchids, except for the ones that I can eat and use for culinary, culinary purposes. So I do grow them with the vanilla orchid. I always thought this was really cool. You, they... Just one plant changed so much of an industry. And then, like I said before, embryos can be isolated from fruit and seed coverings. All right, so you can take a, a mango and throw that in there and develop it in vitro. But it's, you need a lot bigger uh, vessel than the ones we've been looking at. You got to... Mature embryos germinate easily in tissue culture to form seedlings and used for research, understocks, and micrografting. I didn't really get into micrografting. This is taking up a lot of time. That's why I didn't get into a lot of stuff. Uh, and occasionally for propagation. Embryo rescue. So this is where you can isolate and uh, the isolation of immature embryos. And I have a couple seeds that I have that are, I don't, they're, they're a little older. So this is another reason why I got into micropropagation because I was starting to realize I have these old seeds and I had a couple from Subcool. And he, 
I got to meet him. I got the seeds from him himself. I can't stop kicking myself if I just kind of held on for a little bit longer and put him under this embryo rescue. That, uh, I or any of these techniques from before that I could have saved him, and I could have had that genetics too. But there's a couple people in the community that I can talk to, thankfully. But we all have that one that that story of the one plant, right? It's yeah. nice that we can we can rescue all this stuff. And then this is Maristem culture. This is just one millimeter in size. Okay. You have to do this with a microscope. This is when you guys, uh, I think one of the questions was about a virus, how to deal with viroids and viruses. This is one of the ways that we deal with this. This is the method that we use. So you're just cutting uh, the very newest growth that's coming out, all right? So that's the least likely to have any pathogens or issues on it. It, it's the main method that we use to clean up everything. But that doesn't mean that you got the virus there or you got, there could still be a chance that you missed it by like a half millimeter, literally. It's, it's fucking crazy. This is how intense it gets, but this is how you do it. You're going to need a microscope. This is why I put it in one of the advanced techniques or the advanced supplies because it goes with advanced techniques. Callus cultures, uh, these state, these are stationary. It's basically, think about when you like cut a tree, but it doesn't like you, uh, like you're trying to tap a tree, but then you left it open and it starts to callus over. That's basically what's going on here, but also there's still new, uh, there's new cells coming out. There's new shoots coming out. So you can, this can be done at any vegetative stage. It's really cool. This is how we can, uh, pretty sure that's how you get the leaf. You know how you saw those punch hole leaf stamps? This is that method. That, I'm, that refers to that. So look into this, look into the books, study this up. Uh, I wasn't able to find pictures that were uh, reasonable to put on here. Uh, if I got a little more time, maybe. But yeah, go ahead and see if you can find them. I found a bunch on, if you follow me on, um, on Instagram, I post a lot of tissue culture stories they're not mine they're from people i follow one of them is cacti fanatici and he's really cool he shows a lot of callus culture work and the as i'm going to be moving forward it's really cool what we can do with them but these are basically made for research pur purposes breeding genetic transformation studies callus cells can be used to produce enzymes medicines natural flavors and colors so th this is where we can make uh, really rare materials or really rare uh, or make enzymes in mass. It's very similar to how we get enzymes in, uh, in mycology. They're just not stationary. That's the next one. This is where I see it getting really cool. Uh, callus suspension culture. Uh, yeah. This is from a couple different books. This is why it looks a little different. Callus subcultured from stationary cultures. Uh, you got suspension cultures that are shaken constantly to perpetuate callus formation. And these use are these are the same as stationary callus cultures, but they're just agitated. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a picture of something that we use on there. Suspension cultures have been enhanced by new methods and that can continuously introduce fresh media into it. So you're not opening anything really. You're just injecting and taking stuff out. It's, it's pretty cool. This is something that I want to get into. 
And this is where you start making thousands of plants. You could have like a couple hundred plants in one vat, okay? And one basically like a Coca-Cola, uh, a liter of cola. You could have a whole bunch of plants in that and just start off with three or four. And then they start to multiply into these like mutant fucking looking things. It's really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, you uh, don't have to transfer at all here, really. It's a lot easier with this one. This is a really cool technique that I um, want to show you guys an example. It's also on my Instagram. I showed an example of a, it's called a bioreactor and plant tissue culture bioreactor. And it's just a bottle or a vessel or a container. You're agitating it around with the media and it makes more cells just by the agitation moving around and the media too. It needs the media to give it the hormones that it needs to perform the, that and the, uh, the fertilizer as well. And the recommended books is what I already put. Boom, done. Questions? Well, first off, that was awesome. Very, very cool. Thank yeah. you. It was very informative. And I really appreciate the time you took to do all that. So thank I you. wish I could have gotten it 15 minutes a little faster so we could get to questions. Uh, but if you guys want to stay on any longer or leave, please let me know. We can wrap up the questions as fast as they come in. Oh, you're muted. Terrible. <laughs> It's okay. I had nothing intelligent to say anyways. Y'all have watched the show long enough to know that never happens. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, I, I'm drawing blanks on questions right now. I'm just I, so I'm formulating my plan right now is because I'm really interested in actually just can I make this work? Yeah, I'm so I'm like trying to figure out how I'm going to turn my kitchen into a lab without the girlfriend knowing well <laughs> she's well she'll find out like afterwards right because it's always easier to ask for forgiveness and i'm getting really good at that one so hey uh, just culture her favorite plant too there you go she can't complain cannabis oh you, you really okay Dude, double up <laughs> oh like is it's I, i'm one of those people where i'm kind of like an uncle rick where he like he's always switching shit up and trying something new and it's like where I found out about KNF, it's like immediately dive deep into that hole now. And this is just one of the next odd um, evolutions into my fascination with what can you and can you not do with plants. So I uh, like, I'm, I'm beyond stoked. And I, once again, I, I agree with uh, God. It's like, thank you just for your prep time on this. I, they, it's there. I could see, when we were talking pre-show and you're talking about how you'd actually kind of pared it down a fair bit. And I was, cause I said, you know, take like say a two hour show and turn it into like six or something like that. And it's okay. I, I can see where going off on, I have the potential to go off on uh, branches and tangents on this and that, but it's still all related, but very cool shit. Very, very. Cool. I, I appreciate all the thank yous. I couldn't have done this first off uh mad props to all the sci to all the scientists and all the citizen scientists that came before all of us that put in the time so that I can read the work that they did and on my own time I don't think I could have done this without modern tech and most of all all the the work that they did but thank you guys for having me on yeah, I appreciate yeah. it and yeah, I, I really want to. Yeah, really want to thank you as well, Raptor. I, I think you answered uh, through your presentation uh, the, some of the key questions I had, um, like uh, what are the steps for preparing a cultivar for preservation and storage. So I, I guess uh, an on uh, to add to that. So what you were showing us uh, is different stages of development. Is there a is there a, a point where you'd like you can put it in? Uh, suspended animation or limbo or like so you can actually like just put it in the fridge and keep it there uh you would eventually see 
So yes, but with some more advanced techniques. Uh, it, it wouldn't be so much of a fridge. It, you would be involving the fridge in it. And it would, if you slow down, lower the temperatures, you slow down the cells. All right. So you can have it be in the same place for a little longer. You can kind of push it like that. That's why I mentioned get one of those box, uh, those ice ice box uh, freezers where it's lit, like horizontal, not the standing up ones. They're less efficient and take up more energy. You can find those for a lot cheaper. And then, like I mentioned before, the cool bot is a device that you have to, uh, I haven't looked into it enough, but it basically allows you to change it from a freezer to a very affordable and a lots of space for a fridge. And you can cool it down even more and you can control the temperatures. You can start to really gauge things and take notes and make sure you know if that's a month old culture or a year old culture. And uh, another thing I didn't, I think I touched up on a little bit was cryopreservation. Right, that gets into like liquid nitrogen and making sure that you have like the things that hold it to that point. So you can save the uh, genetic material that way, but it it's more of you having to know how to work with that stuff and you have a place to put all that stuff and you're willing to spend the money on it to have a cryopreservation section of your house. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is doable, <laughs> but you have to know what you're doing. And then there's antifreeze materials as well as is what I was reading. So there's, it, it's being done already, but in, in very advanced labs. But I, um, I was talking to Purple Thumb and he was he's one of those guys where i put my money on purple that you fucking do it i, I could see him here we go i saw him next um, <laughs> project oh yeah, good purple, lord saw purple thought posted up there that he'll be trying out this tissue culture within the year and i think <laughs> yeah. i it within that sooner myself i didn't even see the chat so i told him i would shout him out and i I had this conversation with him. He was, he's one of the few people I would put my money on that I could see him first off fucking building it, all that shit himself. And everything I mentioned, I could, I don't even have to be in the same room as him. I could see him like, fuck yeah, I know how to do that. I could fucking do that. I could clear out my son, my, uh, my kid's room. He turned that into a cryopreservation <laughs> fucking room. You're good. The fact that we just sacrificed the kids' room for that, I just gained even more respect for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always say another thing, uh, going back and reading the chat when I had a second there, was thank you guys for bailing me out because, like, I'm sitting there processing everything and trying to think of questions when it gets to that point. And, like, I'm, I, I'm trying to formulate my plan and I'm drawing blanks, but you also see there's a lot of people in the chat that are kind of having the same thing when it's – um. And just screaming to bring you back for um to for another episode soon, a follow up episode. So yeah, I'll I want to have some stuff actually going, and maybe uh, I could have maybe even take a video beforehand, so I'm not fumbling around and feeling nervous on live, and just show yep. an example like here's here's me doing that stage one, here's me doing stage two, but uh, this is going to take a couple months. I think we'll just be at stage one for a bit and then everyone can get to stage one uh, it like i said you can do this all in the kitchen but what well, you can do the majority of the shoot the cultivation uh, stages one through four you can do in your home kitchen that's what i meant when i said okay you could do this in your kitchen just follow all of that but once we get into like Oh, hey, I want to do use this for breeding. I want to use this for that. It, it can still be used in breeding. This is one of the questions. But how I see it being used is just making more, just having it go constantly through stage one and two until you need it to go to three and four to uh, 
you know, whether you're using that as a replacement for a mom, you want to make sure that it's starting from the beginning and that you're getting something good. Uh, but yeah, if you're using this for breeding, try to incorporate a lab that tests for viruses and pathogens if you're going to be selling that material in whatever way, whether it's through a seed, it's through clones. Uh, I, I, uh, thanks to shout out to Dave. Dave's not here because he introduced me to Skunk Tech. That guy's fucking cool. He's working with Mean Gene stuff, and he's just constantly, uh, really doing cool stuff with it. He's doing his own breeding work too, and I saw him, uh, re like put out on a story that someone's working with his stuff through tissue culture. So this stuff is is really cool. Okay. You spend a hundred dollars on a pack, on a 10 pack, 120, whatever it is. I've seen up to 160 and even crazier above that. That's a steep amount of money for someone. And then you look at how much an ounce is and it's okay to me, but if you're trying to keep that going and it was a lot of money, let's say it was a $300 pack. That is something I'm going to be more likely to use this method with. Or like I mentioned before, uh, I have some cherry flavor, cherry gasoline uh, terps from Spartan Genetics. Nothing to do with Spartan Grounds. Uh, but he doesn't have this around anymore. This is the last one. Of, uh, I could probably find it and buy it, but I already have it. I want to make sure I get it going. So this is where I see it really being worth it. It's not going to take up that much time. It's once a week, you mix up what you would in an instant lemonade. I just see a bunch of powder, some water, right? You might want to throw it in the microwave to break down the granules a little bit or use warm water. Uh, it's something very approachable generally. But like I said, you want to get into the, the crazy science stuff that's when you're going to start having to invest either more time into making those actual equipment. Like you can make a stir plate with just a fan and some magnets and some glue. Okay. He, uh, Genetic Memory Farms was telling me how he did just that with uh, to make a stir plate big enough for a five gallon buck because that's what they were uh, fermenting in with beer you see the stir plates in brewing because it's mycology. It's yeast. It's a single cell fungi. It's brewing is just mycology. And what I was talking about that, uh, having it go in a stir plate in a vessel, that's, a that's another example of fungal, uh, bioreactors. Oh, that's another thing I didn't get to sh uh, show off the fucking bioreactors. Uh, first, I'm going to show you guys an illustration of just the, an example of the apical meristem because I didn't get to do that. It wasn't on the slide. Okay. And then I'll show you some of that. And then we can, I, there wasn't any questions. So I'm just, I'm just going about that. And then we can close up. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. There you go. This is just a very close up illustration. And you can, you see these three lines? This is explant, and then this is a meristemic dome. Okay, this is how fucking small, this is why I said you, buy a microscope. This is why you would want one. I, I want a microscope for mycology, for some soil science that I've been getting into, uh, like, microbial soil science, looking at what's going on within the soil and tissue culture. So those are three good excuses for me to now get a microscope. And that allows me to do all this work. Yeah, uh, that's it for that. Let me go to the, uh, and yeah, like I showed here, it's just one millimeter. All right, try to put that into perspective of trying to cut a slice that fucking small. You need a microscope 
people say, oh, I'm going to try it without. Good luck. Good luck. Fuck. I, I can't imagine. Uh, I have glasses and I can't fucking do that. Well, you know, there's this stubborn part of me that's going to fucking try, but the, like I, that I'll stubborn it, part of me is going to try. No, Hold my like, beer. Fuck. <laughs> like pretty much like 98% sure I'm going to fail kind of thing, you know, because, uh, you know, I don't have a microscope, but one day I'll, I will acquire one and then, you know, I right yeah I, it, it's what just one of those things it's kind of like uh that was like playing with chainsaws right like how fine can you go now you ain't fucking cutting that with no chainsaw obviously you ain't going that fine but uh yeah i love to fail on that one dude this is yeah this was a great shit dude Very, and then great. just uh two more picks i'm yep. done oh, yeah. uh yeah. This is the bioreactor, one of the kinds of bioreactors. Actually, I might even go to my uh, Instagram because I have another, another picture that shows another, a better example. But yeah, you just have a vessel. This could be a mason jar, all right? It doesn't have to look like this. It just needs to be, like I said before, it could be a fucking Coke, a liter Coke bottle. It could be whatever. Uh, but you're gonna need these filters to come in and this is you see how there's two uh two points come in to drilled out spaces that goes on top one injects and one takes out it's a pump that goes in and out like that so you yeah you have a cellulose valve that brings everything in and then it allows the air to come out too and that's, this is how you're controlling the liquid coming in and out. This is allowing you to skip having to go in there and take it out like I was talking about with fluff, All right? Instead of going in there once a week or two, two weeks, whatever, uh, a month. This is constantly pumping in new nutrients and pumping out old. It's also exchanging the air as well. So just think of a uh, ebb and flow. This is just yep. uh, plant tissue culture ebb and flow. If I yeah cool best, and then uh, here just like I said, simple. Uh, you just take a couple, they grow out, come out to be a lot, and then you just throw it into stage three. And then um, let me just go to my Instagram, and there's it's pretty cool. Let me just save like this all totally. Uh, and then uh, if you guys want, I can show you guys my tissue culture favorites to follow on Instagram. Sure. Get into that. Uh, so you guys can uh, follow along in the fun. Uh, I like to follow the hashtags uh, micro propagation, biology, tissue culture, bioreactor, uh, micro propagation, horticulture, botany. All those are going to give you some good, good feed to follow. Okay. share there we go this is the last one i want to show I, I have the other ones on here too uh yeah this is a simple aeration one and you just have some some air bubbles coming in through you could see them moving the little plantlets around this one is an airlift bioreactor and it's more of a a stream that goes out instead of an individual like agitation points that's just bubbles coming out they're just injecting air so you just need an air pump for that pretty fucking easy pretty simple then you could go mechanical steering stirring that's what i was talking about before with the stir plate all right you could have this on a stir plate in a mason jar going with the correct around uh, the correct amounts of media and you, this is all liquid media too. 
All right. So you're actually increasing the volume of grow space that you're working with. You're instead of growing two dimensionally, you're growing three dimensionally. It's it's going to this is why I said it's a, a time saver, a space saver. It's there's a lot less energy going in. If you have this plugged in to uh, to like a solar powered system, that's what I would kind. Of, that's the kind of lab that I would want to fucking set up. You have all this air conditioning going, okay. You have all these lights going, okay. At least I'm not tapping into the grid, and I can be. I can have my lab be separate. And the last one here is just a vibrating plate with the gas. So you're using the two other mentioned methods. So you're just using the agitation of the actual physical, like, uh, oh, it's a vibrating stir plate. Uh, and then you're just injecting gas the same way. Yeah, hope, uh, hope that was interesting to everyone. I wanted to put that one there because I was preparing for uh, this episode. And I got really into bioreactors. I kind of read about it before, but I didn't have enough research under my belt to understand all of these terms. It's okay if you don't understand it. Everybody doesn't know in the beginning. It's okay. Just start with your first step and then step two, step three. It starts to become easier after more and more steps take place. So just... Please don't feel afraid to get your feet wet on this. Right, Absolutely. Rick? Well, it's just like how, how many uh, cannabis growers that are watching right now didn't know shit about growing that uh, when they first started and now we're growing solid dank. Just goes to show that it's not every, like, you know, all the stuff can be learned. It goes one hand with another. And, um, you know, this really humbled me too. I used to say, oh, I'm 100% organic. I don't see a reason why to not go organic. This is the one exception. All right. I can no, no longer say I'm 100% organic because this isn't. All right? I can say that I grow mostly organic, but it's also, I used to talk smack on just conventional growers too. It's just like, oh, it's not necessary. Well, in this instance, it is. Uh, I wouldn't be able to, possibly culture thousands of plants if I really wanted to without this. I would like to figure out how to do it organically though. That would be, if I was involved in, at all in any of the steps forward with that, cool. That would be kind of peak citizen science achievement for me. All right. Maybe. And huh? no, I was just going to say, maybe I'll, one day we'll see you in a magazine write up about how you ha did figure out the breakthrough way to uh, do just with a fat organic uh, tissue <laughs> culture samples. So kind of like Nobel Prize winner or something like that. That'd be badass. I'd be like, I know him. Yeah, sounds like a good uh, point of research for my master's, my PhD. If I go PhD, uh, I guess. But yeah, that's that's where I'd be going. Just to let everyone know, sorry I've been away. I've been super busy with school, just like I was telling everyone here. Uh, and I gave up on my garden. I gave up on all the cultures of plant tissue culture that I did and the fungal tissue cultures that I was doing. I just put them in suspended, basically put them in a liquid culture syringes and put that to the side into the fridge, just like Uncle Rick was saying. Yeah, you could do that to an extent with plants, but it's a little different because they need different stuff. I feel like mycology is easier because you need a lot less hormones. You need a lot less uh, fertilizers and everything like that. So if anyone needs any advice on any of this stuff, just let me know. Uh, I'm Raptor Grow. Find me on Instagram. Thanks, Caribou Heart for having me on it was fun and uh i think everyone's had enough of uh hearing me talk about science shit i yeah but fun. we gotta get we gotta get you back man like we do we definitely gotta further this like this is there is there, this is truly is one of those this is a lot to digest and uh, we want to wrap our heads and get you back um 
I'll be, you can expect me to probably hassle you within the next couple of days. And then if it's going to take a while for part two, that's cool. We'll just, you know, but, uh, we'll, uh we'll... yeah, I'm down. I'd, I'd like to have people enough time for people to digest everything too. So yeah. we'll, let's, let's keep in touch about both of our schedules. I actually, uh, another reason why I haven't started up another batch of cultures is because I have family coming over and the last month have been uh, that I had off. I had construction on my house too. We had a lot of work going on. I didn't want to work with all that dust. We had the tar, the, a part of the indoor, uh, of the indoor rooms. And it was just such a fucking mess. So I'm fine with, uh, hopefully we can talk more about it and maybe we can get, Maybe find a, a guinea pig on the panel that also wants to get their feet wet and try it out, see see what they can do. And I can kind of guide them through on that too. That'd be fun. You notice how Uncle Rick just immediately acts like he wasn't paying attention when you said <laughs> guinea pig, he starts looking down. Um, um, I, I might very well be into that, try and uh, go along with you. That. And actually, we should invite anybody else that's willing to participate, whether – you be at home in the live chat for that, or if you're one of our panelists, whatever, man. Let's see if let's... we've done grow offs before, right? We've done auto flowers, ugly autos, and all this, a few different ones. Let's do uh, talk about doing maybe uh, tissue culture uh, off to. That would be really cool. I'd be into doing that. Yeah. Hey, and don't be afraid. Like I said before, don't be afraid of failure. Like if something doesn't culture the right way, that's how I learn. I learned from all my fuck ups and I fucked up a lot. Like I said before, I had fun as a teenager. I, I messed up and it, it drew those fuck ups drew me away from what my goal was. It felt like that at the time. But then after you start to let it sink in what you learn from that, Oh shit. Now I'm way further than I ever could have been because I learned twice as much from me messing up that whatever situation. And it's uh, just learning from failure doesn't feel good, but it happens. And then that's just how we grow. I think that's the fastest way we grow. And I think it's if fucking humans do have a superpower, that's it our ability to fuck up and get twice as better afterwards. Well, that, that's where I do my best learning right there. I, I would second that is, and I've done most of my learning that way is, and like, like I was just uh, beacon off earlier about, you can't cut that one mil mare stem without a uh, magnifier, without the microscope. I absolutely 100% believe you, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to try and I'll fucking fail at it. Right? Like, uh, You're going to get one of those uh, jewelers, fucking glasses, scopes. Okay. How like the nine I... lenses in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just have them keep going. <laughs> That'll be great. All right, Raptor, man. Like, thanks again. Like, Bob, uh, for doing this but once again i think more than anything thank you for your prep time and effort that you would have put into doing this uh, it's uh, a lot of work and effort we want we want to acknowledge that uh, first and foremost been a lot of fun um is there anything else you'd like to say before we get out of here yeah uh, uh i already covered being safe i already covered not you know being afraid of new challenges uh, from here on out, it's just go for it. Okay. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck the people that say you can't do it. Go learn okay. how to do it and then show that you're doing it. Uh, no one, uh, I had so many people telling me, oh, because I didn't have the math, because I didn't have the science background, that I couldn't get into this stuff. I pushed myself, I fucking learned. I put in the hours and I know it now. Uh, I'm not, a, you know, I, I'm not at PhD level where I've been doing all this work on it, but guess where they had to start from the beginning. So just, just push yourself to do it. You're already here just by learning and watching this. That's it. 
Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank for you. Having me on. Thank you Great so on. much, Raptor. That Great was on. awesome. Thanks again, brother. We truly appreciate that. Um, Uncle Rick, what do you guys got going on tomorrow night? Uh, well, I just lost myself on my screen here, so it's a little bit. All right, uh, Goddess, what is Uncle Rick going on? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're trying to recruit new growers, and it's kind of just all about that. Okay. Um, yeah. I unfortunately forgot to mention uh, I won't be able to join because it's my daughter's uh, graduation, and I don't. Yeah, that's think I'll legit. Be I I might be back in time. It starts at like six, but it's like a forty-five minute drive, so we'll see. I don't know. That's not fair. I was looking forward to shitting all over here for that one, but it's like when you pull out a <laughs> legit excuse, like, oh, it's my daughter's graduation. It's not like it's a freaking other just out of <laughs> yeah. Okay, that is absolutely... You know, my dog know. ate my homework. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll um, have pictures for proof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I imagine they're going to be amazing, too. Uh, everybody in the live chat, thanks for hanging out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I actually was pretty easy on dabs and joints because I wanted to pay attention to this because this is like this is one that it truly does interest me, and I can't get too mind blown on that one. Um, I think uh, you know what? Give us a, a thumbs up on that one. If not for us and the channel, for Raptor and the show that he just put on, I, I think he deserves a thumbs up and a like for that one, absolutely. Um, but everyone in there, you guys are here time and again. We love you guys. Always living it up in the chat there. Um, Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Your support truly means the world to us. And we'll be back Friday night with our usual shit show. It's going to be a great time. And, you know, in the meantime, don't be uh, check out uh, Let's Be Buds tomorrow night. Raptor Girl, I threw your Instagram link up in our uh, description. So if you're watching this, go uh, check out below and uh, click his link and check him out. See what he's about. <laughs>